Hey guys, this is part two of my series of videos asking the question, is Ison the blue kachina of Hopi prophecy? In this video, I'm going to continue where I left the prophecy and discuss the red kachina, why it could actually be our sun, and share my insights into what this could mean for us on a spiritual level. Again, I don't want to come across as spreading fear or excessive speculation, so please don't take my word as truth without doing your own research as well. Here is the rest of the prophecy. They will start as fires that will burn within us. We will burn up with desires and conflict if we do not remember the original teachings and return to the peaceful way of life. Not far behind will come the purifier, the red kachina, who will bring the day of purification. On this day, the earth, her creatures, and all life as we know it, will be offered the chance to change forever. There will be messages that precede the coming of the purifier. They will leave messages to those on earth that remember the old ways. The messages will be found on the living stone, through the sacred grains, and even the waters. From the purifier will issue forth a great red light. All things will change in their manner of being. Every living thing will be given the opportunity to change from the largest to the smallest living things. Those who return to the ways given to us in the original teaching and live a natural way of life will not be touched by the coming of the purifier. They will survive and build a new world. Only in the ancient teachings will they have the ability to understand the messages to be found. It is important to understand these messages will be found on every living thing, even within our bodies, even within a drop of blood. Many will appear to have lost their souls in the final days. So intense will the nature of these changes that those who are weak in spirit will go insane, for we are nothing without spirit. Only those who return to the values of the old ways will be able to find peace of mind. For in the earth, they will find relief from the madness that will be around us. Many people of this time will be empty in spirit, for they have no sempaku, no life force in their eyes. As we get close to the time of the purifier, there will be many who walk like ghosts through their cities, through canyons they have constructed in their man-made mountains. Those who walk through these places will be very heavy in their walk it will appear almost painful as they take each step, for they have become very disconnected from their spirit and the earth. After the arrival of the twins, they begin to vanish before your eyes, so much like muck smoke. Others will have great deformities, both in their mind and upon their bodies. There will be those who walk in their body that are not from this reality, for many of the gateways that once protected us will be opened. There will be much confusion. Confusion between the sexes, the children and their elders. Life will get very perverted and there will be little social order during these times. Many will ask for the mountains themselves to fall upon them and end their misery. Still others will appear untouched by what is occurring. Those who remember the original teaching and have reconnected with their heart and spirit, those who remember who their mother and father are, the Pahana, who left to live in the mountains and the forest. When the purifier comes, we will see him first as a small red star, which will come very close and sit in our heavens watching us, watching to see how well we have remembered the sacred teachings. This purifier will show us many miraculous signs in our heavens. In this, we will know that our Creator is not a dream. Even those who do not feel their connection to spirit will see the face of the Creator across the sky. Things unseen will be felt strongly. Many things will begin to occur that do not make sense, for reality will be shifting back. We will receive many warnings allowing us to change our way, from below the earth as well as above. Then one morning we will awaken to a red dawn. The sky will be the color of blood and many things will begin to happen that right now we are not sure of their exact nature. For much of reality will not be as it is now. There will be many strange beasts upon the earth in those days, some from past and some that we have never seen. 
The nature of mankind will seem strange as we walk between worlds, and we house many spirits, even within our own bodies. After a time, we will again walk with our brothers from the stars, and rebuild the earth, but not until the purifier has left his mark upon the universe. No living thing will go untouched here or in the heavens. The way through this time is said to be found in our hearts and reuniting with our spiritual self. Getting simple and returning to living with and upon the earth in harmony with her creatures. Remembering we are the caretakers, the fire keepers of the spirit. Our relatives from the stars are coming home to see how well we have fared in our journey. There are some obvious messages in this part of the prophecy that stand out. The need to reunite with spirit and the original teachings is repeated as the way through these challenging times ahead. It also speaks of those who will struggle during these times and some who will remain unaffected by the purifier. The original teachings is referring to the knowledge that we are much more than our physical body, that our physical reality is but an illusion and a testing ground for our immortal soul. If you have watched the Mystery Teachings series, you will know that there is a time of purification spoken about by the ancient Egyptians where our hearts are weighed, and only those whose hearts are the weight of a feather will be given access to the kingdom, the afterlife, the time of Zeptepi where we once again walk the earth as divine ethereal souls. The purifier is designed to sort out the wheat from the chaff, to determine which souls are worthy and have walked the high path during the incarnations of the 26,000 year cycle. Those that stay connected to the physical machinations of our current reality and think that this is all there is will not fare well during these times. Money, careers, school, possessions, distractions like TV and games, your house, your car and the economy are all completely unimportant to those that remember that we are immortal, ethereal souls having a physical experience. Of course, we have to exist in this physical way of life, so I'm not saying that we need to completely give up all of these things. Rather, we need to remain disconnected and not place importance and identity on these physical trappings that keep us bound to the physical. Those that hold on to these things as representations of who they are will be those that will vanish like muck smoke as they are returned to Atum to be wiped clean and redistributed as energy as the Creator sees fit. Guys, I don't mean to get all preachy. That's not the intention of this video, but it is important to set the scene for what the purifier, the Red Kachina, means for us on a physical and ethereal level. The prophecy speaks of signs that will precede the purifier, signs from below the earth and above, and also signs from within our own bodies. The face of the Creator will be seen across the sky and things unseen will be felt strongly. Think about it. What object, what entity can do all of these things that sits over us watching every day? Our sun. Solar activity can cause earthquakes, auroras. It can affect us on a physical and an emotional level. It is responsible for life on this planet. You may be thinking, okay, that makes sense, but what about the prophecy stating that a small red star will be seen in the heavens? Last time I checked, the sun is a yellowish white color. This is where I feel Ison comes into the picture. As I stated in the previous video, there is evidence to suggest Ison is affecting the sun, even from its current distance out near Mars, causing large filament eruptions and solar flares. If this is the case, as Ison makes its way towards the sun, solar activity could increase dramatically. Average C, M and X class flares can cause all of the messages the Hopi prophecy speaks of. If Ison causes the sun to really go nuts and pump out massive flares, we could witness these usual reactions like auroras, earthquakes, volcanic activity, heightened human emotion and physical symptoms on a much larger grand scale. I read an interesting book by Paul Le Violet called Earth Under Fire. In it he mentions a sun sequence called the T-Tauri effect. T-Tauri stars have been observed 
to have unusually expanded sizes. This is because their atmospheres receive extra energy from the constant flaring and continuous matter accretion on their surfaces. A T Tauri star's photosphere, its outer light radi radiating envelope, can be inflated by a factor of 2 to 5, giving it a diameter of 2 to 5 times that of the Sun. As a result of its large size, the star's photosphere has a much lower surface temperature than that of the Sun. Hence, it appears red in colour, rather than yellow-white. Paul of Ilets is theorising that dust and gas caused by a galactic superwave causes this T Tauri effect on stars, resulting in massive and continuous flaring that affects the star's size and colour. With the Electric Universe model in mind, could a highly magnetic electric object like Ison, which seems to fit the blue Kachina profile, have a similar effect on the Sun, causing massive flaring and a change in colour to red? This could explain the part of the prophecy stating a small red star will sit in the heavens watching over us to see how well we have remembered the sacred teachings. This massive flare activity could produce very low latitude red auroras, the red dawn with the sky the colour of blood. The Hopi prophecy is not the only one to mention a blood red sky. This is part of another Native American prophecy from Stalking Wolf that speaks of the end time purification. The sky suddenly turned back to a liquid and turned blood red. As far as his eyes could see, the sky was solid red with no variation in shadow, texture or light. As sunset drifted to night, the stars shone red, the colour never leaving the sky, and everywhere was heard the cries of fear and pain. This then is the third sign, the night of the bleeding stars. It will become known throughout the world for the sky in all lands will be red with the blood of the sky, day and night. And this, from the Colburn Bible. The doom shape, called the Destroyer in Egypt, was seen in all the land's whereabouts. In colour it was bright and fiery, in appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil, like water bubbling into a pool from an underground supply and all men agree it was a most fearsome sight. It was not a great comet or a loosened star, being more like a fiery body of flame. Its movements on high were slow. Below, it swirled in the manner of smoke, and it remained close to the sun whose face it hid. There was a bloody redness about it, which changed as it passed along its course. Could massive flaring cause the Earth's magnetosphere to become so charged that the entire sky turns the colour of blood red. These prophecies and ancient texts all have that common theme. The Hopi prophecy also speaks of unusual spiritual events that will cause confusion as we walk between worlds. This seems like a reference to the gateway between our current physical existence and the ethereal plane. Could this be the soul's journey through the seven gates of the underworld? our ethereal energy system of chakras as they open. Watch the Mystery Teaching series to grasp this in much more detail. It is easy to become overwhelmed by the sense of pain, hardship, and destruction spoken about in these prophecies and ancient texts, but you have to realize this is only on a physical level. Nearly every prophecy in ancient text speaks about a need to return to nature to remember sacred teachings that will give you peace of mind during these times, that you are much more than your physical container. Whether or not Ison is the blue Kachina and the Sun the Purifier is not the most important point of these videos. I have presented evidence based on sacred science and correct model science. That backs my opinion, but it is dangerous to become completely closed to the possibility that I'm wrong. I ask you to research everything for yourself and not blindly take my word on anything. The most important message here is to realize you are an ethereal soul. This physical existence is a test to see which souls are worthy to experience Zeptepi, the start of the next 26,000 year cycle, the golden age, where we once again live 
with divine connection to our Creator.